thoracic duct. In this topic, we will be discussing about the formation, course, termination, relations, tributaries, and development of the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel which drains lymph from most of the body. The lymph in the thoracic duct is milky white in appearance. It contains a product of fat digestion, known as chyle, from the intestine. The duct appears beaded due to the presence of numerous valves in its lumen. Area of drainage. The thoracic duct drains the lymph from all parts of the body except the right side of the head and neck, right side of the chest wall, right lung, right side of the heart, and right surface of the liver. Note, the thoracic duct drains lymph from the whole body except the right upper quadrant which is drained by the right lymphatic duct. Extent. The thoracic duct extends from the upper end of the cisterna chyli on the posterior abdominal wall till the junction between the left internal jugular and left subclavian veins at the root of the neck. Measurements. The measurements of the thoracic duct are as follows. It is 45 centimeters in length. The width of the lumen is around 5 millimeters. Formation, course, and termination. The duct begins in the abdomen at the lower border of the 12th thoracic vertebra as a continuation of the cisterna chyli. It enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. It then ascends in the posterior mediastinum, so the right of the midline, on the front of the vertebral bodies. On reaching the 5th thoracic vertebra, it crosses the midline from right to left and enters the superior mediastinum to run along the left border of the esophagus and reaches the root of the neck. Here it arches laterally at the level of the seventh cervical vertebra, in front of the vertebral system and behind the carotid system. Finally, the duct descends in front of the first part of the left subclavian artery and terminates at the junction of the left subclavian and left internal jugular veins. Relations. At the aortic orifice of the diaphragm, anteriorly, median arcuate ligament of the diaphragm, posteriorly, 12th thoracic vertebra, on the right, the zygous vein, on the left, the aorta. In the posterior mediastinum, anteriorly, the diaphragm, lower part of the descending aorta, and the esophagus. Posteriorly, the vertebral column, anterior longitudinal ligament, terminal parts of the hemiazygous vein, and right posterior intercostal arteries. On the right, the azygous vein. On the left, the descending thoracic aorta. In the superior mediastinum, anteriorly, arch of the aorta, and commencement of the left subclavian artery. Posteriorly, the vertebral column, on the right, edge of the esophagus, on the left, the left lung and pleura. In the root of the neck, anteriorly, containing the left common carotid artery, left internal jugular vein, and left vagus nerve. Posteriorly, the vertebral artery and vein, the medial border of the scalenus anterior, phrenic nerve, and thyrocervical trunk and its branches. Tributaries. The tributaries of the thoracic duct are as follows. In the abdomen, efferents from the lower six intercostal lymph nodes of both the sides. In the thorax, a pair of descending lymph trunks which drain lymph from the posterior intercostal lymph nodes of the upper six spaces. Lymph vessels from the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. In the neck, the left jugular lymph trunk, draining lymph from the neck, the left subclavian lymph trunk, draining lymph from the left upper limb, and the left bronchiomediastinal trunk. Development. There are three stages in the development of the thoracic duct. Stage one. In this stage, a network of lymph channels is seen in front of the thoracic part of the vertebral column. Stage two. Here, Two longitudinal lymph channels appear in the network of lymph channels, one on the left 
and another on the right with the number of cross communications. Stage 3. Now, a cross communication appears opposite the fifth thoracic vertebra. The right longitudinal channel below this cross communication and left longitudinal channel above this cross communication persist and form the thoracic duct, while all of the other parts disappear.